President Mohammad Nasheed meets with the Minister of Commerce of China, Cheng Deming. Discussions at the meeting held at the President's office were mainly focused on promoting trade and economic ties between the Maldives and, the chi and China. President Nasheed and Minister Deming also discussed on ways of increasing Chinese assistance to the Maldives and ongoing development projects in the Maldives with Chinese assistance. President Nasheed expressed Maldives' interest to work with China on many fronts, including climate change and green growth. Briefing the Minister on ongoing renewable energy projects in Maldives, the President declared the government's willingness to work with Chinese companies to begin such a renewable energy project. Thanking the Chinese government for the support it has rendered to Maldives in the past, including the new National Museum, the President underscored the proposed housing project to build 1,000 housing units with Chinese assistance under the government housing project. Mr. Shen Dimen assured the President that the Chinese government would continue its assistance and support for the development of the Maldives. He said Chinese government encouraged Chinese investors to invest in the Maldives and was working to create incentives for Chinese investors to invest in the Maldives. Mr. Demin noted that Maldives' cooperation with China in global climate change talks and said the Chinese government was willing to work with Maldives to achieve an important outcome in Cancun later this year. Chinese Minister of Commerce Mr. Demin is on an official visit to Maldives at an invitation of the Maldives Minister of Economic Development. He is accompanied by a Chinese business delegation. The President's office informed that no cabinet minister or a government employee can be summoned to an individual committee of the parliament. The Press Secretary Mohamed Saher quoted Article 98 in defence of, of the government's decision. He also said government ministers and employees will answer to the parliament under Article 140, which states that the respective ministers, ministers can be summoned to the parliament under the Act 2 2005. In response to the government's decision, opposition DRP said ministers and government officials can still be summoned to individual committees of the parliament and said its members will not vote for ministers who disobey the summons in the upcoming vote for of no vote of confidence on the newly appointed cabinet following its en masse resignation. Minority leader Musa Manik of MDP said the government made the decision only to make its work more efficient and said even though DRP does not vote for the new cabinet, its ministers will continue on their mandate. Police confiscate illegal weaponry from two locals at the airport immigration who arrived from a flight from Sri Lanka last night. Chief Customs Officer Ahmed Shima said a powerful electric stun gun with nine face masks was confiscated from the two. Confiscated weaponry and two men are now handed over to the Defence Force. Earlier, police found 260 guns and 12 slingshots at the commercial harbour. The guns are now with the defence authorities as they were found to be more dangerous than toy guns. Also, double-edged three-foot swords were packed which were packed separately and brought in cardboard boxes were also uncovered by the customs authorities. President Mohammed Nasheed ratifies broadcasting bill by, passed by the People's Majesty at its sitting on the 3rd of August. Following the ratification, the Broadcasting Act has been published in the Government Gazette. The Broadcasting Act which makes the Broadcasting Act makes provisions to establish a broadcasting commission to implement broadcast policy. The Act states duties and responsibilities of the Commission and stipulates how broadcasting license could be issued. The Act covers eight areas, which are preliminary matters, the Maldives Broadcasting Commission, broadcasting services, licensing, broadcasting content, providing broadcast services, regulations and other general matters. Following the ratification, the Maldives Broadcasting Commission, a seven-member commission entrusted with implementation of the broadcasting policy, regulation of broadcasting industry and promoting of and promotion of responsible broadcasting is established in accordance with Act 3 of the article. The President shall appoint members to the commission as stipulated in the Article 6 of the Act. According to the Act, broadcasting service can only be provided under the terms of a license issued by the Broadcasting Commission. The Act comes into effect after 19 days of ratification and publication in the Government Gazette. A UK border agency announces special arrangements for processing the application of student visas from the Maldives for courses beginning in autumn 2010 
or before 31st of October 2010. Students who submit their visa applications between Wednesday 8th and 14th September will have their applications processed within five working days. This means that students will be able to apply for a visa and get back with their documents during one visit to Sri Lanka. Maldivian students need to make an appointment at the Visa Application Centre in Colombo before they visit by emailing. VFS will have a number of dedicated appointments for Maldivian students only between these dates. Applications, any application submitted outside these dates will not be considered under the faster processing arrangements. It is important that applicants follow the current Tire 4 guidance carefully, complete their applications fully and submit the correct documents supporting. The Visa Application Centre in Colombo is operated by UK's border agency's commercial partner, VFS Global Services Private Limited.